Well, if you will, I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Genesis. Let's go over to the book of Genesis this morning. <clears throat> in fact, if you will, uh, just turn over to uh, Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. While you're turning there, reminded of a uh, reminded of three psychology students who were about to take their final final test before they can become licensed psychologists, and so the professor giving them this oral exam. He had three students. He had Mary, William, and a student named Bubba. There's your first mistake: is going to a counselor whose name's Bubba. But uh, anyway, he asked he asked William. He says, "William, uh, he said, I have one question, and that question is this: What is the opposite of depression?" And uh, he said, uh, "Happiness." The professor said, "Wonderful." So he moved on to Mary. He said, "Mary, what is the uh, the opposite of sad?" And she said, well, joyful. And he said, wonderful. And he looked at Bubba and he said, Bubba, what is the opposite of woe? And Bubba sat there for a minute and he thought and then he finally said, giddy up. <laughs> so, look, we'll pass the offering plate around if you want some better jokes. You know, I'm doing the best I can. Uh, so I'm going to giddy up this morning because it is a little after 25 after 9. But I want you to think on this thought as we look in Genesis chapter 37. Genesis 37. I want you to simply think on this truth, how to make your dreams come true. And I'm preaching to graduates this morning. I really am. I'm preaching to young people. Uh, in fact, if you're 30, 50, 70, uh, you can still make your dreams come true. I think of Moses so many times. Uh, raised 40 years in Pharaoh's court, 40 years in the backside of the desert while God was schooling him and preparing him. Uh, and at the age of 80, God called him into ministry. Uh, so if you're uh, 40, uh, 60, or 80, it does not matter. You can still, through God's grace, make your dreams come true. So let me read a text, and then we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Genesis 35, uh, excuse me, 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. Uh, may God add the blessings and the anointing to the reading of his word. Uh, but I want to say a little bit. Uh, about some dreams. Uh, I'll tell you about the story of Joseph in just a moment, but there are God-given dreams, and that's what we're talking about here. When I say how to make your dreams come true, I'm not talking about just envision something in your head and, uh, and aiming for it and going with it. I'm talking about God-given dreams. I, I believe the enemy gives you dreams as well, but I believe there's God-given dreams like what God had given Joseph here. Uh, and uh, you, as, as a young individual uh, looking at life or starting life, you must have some dreams uh, that have been given to you uh, by God. And if you don't have any of those dreams today, then what you need to do is, is you need to get along with God and get you some God-given dreams. Uh, because he's got a plan for you. Uh, you hear me preach this all the time. He's got a, a destiny for you. He has a will for you. Uh, God has it in his heart to bless you uh, beyond what you could ever plan, what you could ever write down, what you could ever uh, dream up in your own mind. Uh, but get along with God and get you some dreams. And listen, and then put God first. Uh, and watch in your life as you begin to live life. And you, you watch as these dreams come true. But there's some things you need to be aware of as we start thinking about uh, dreams coming true. Uh, and I want you to write these down. And I'm going to move quick, so I'm not going to stay, stay where I'm at long. Uh, but the story of Joseph, just in a nutshell, it's a rather long story. And I love the book of Genesis, particularly the story of Joseph. But we see that starting in 37, that the story of Joseph begins. There will be a few uh, select passages where the story removes from Joseph. 
Uh, but then it always goes back to Joseph, all the way to the end of Genesis. Uh, but the story of Joseph is this. Joseph, he, he dreamed a dream. He had some God-given dreams, and God, God had given him those dreams. Uh, and he went and he shared those dreams with his brothers. Uh, he shared what God had showed him. Now, that may have been a mistake, and that's a whole other sermon, but sometimes the things God gives you, you can't share it with anybody because nobody else will understand, and nobody else will get it. Uh, and God didn't speak it to them, and so they, in fact, may misunderstand. But at times, there are things God puts in your heart that you know, and that you know for certain, and you can't explain it, and you can't understand it, uh, but you just know that it's a thing that's going to be one day. And so... So God had given Joseph these dreams, and he went and shared it with his brothers. Well, his brothers were jealous because his father favored him. Uh, and so they devised this evil plan. In fact, they began to call him a dreamer uh, in a mocking sense of the word. Uh, and so they devised this plan. They put him in a pit. They sold him into slavery. He got uh, sent to Egypt. Uh, and while there in Egypt, he found favor under the Pharaoh as a slave. Uh, but then one day he gets cast into prison. Uh, and uh, as he's cast into prison, uh, there he interprets dreams for a butler and for a baker. And they made promise. They said, if you will interpret my dreams, uh, when, I, when my dream comes true, uh, I will uh, elevate you out of that prison into a place of prominence in Egypt. Uh, and uh, and uh, one of them ended up uh, his dream come true. The other, uh, his, both of them dreamed come true. But one of them got killed. His head was cut off by the the pharaoh. And the other dream come true. And he was let out of prison. But he didn't honor his word to Joseph. So Joseph was forgotten and forsaken, not only by brothers, uh, but by those that he was in prison with. Uh, and so finally, through a long circumstance of events. Joseph is actually let out of prison, promoted to second in charge of all of Egypt. The Pharaoh put everything in Egypt under the hand of Joseph. Uh, and so Joseph was then, when famine hit the land of Israel, Joseph and his family come to Egypt looking for food. Joseph was able to minister to his own family, to brothers who had forsook him and sold him into slavery, really left him for dead. Uh, and so he was able to feed them and bring them in. That's how the children of Israel, Israel wound up in Egypt, as we've been preaching on that for these, uh, these past many weeks. They went there in time of famine, and that, what was intended on a short stay turned into a long stay and turned into bondage. But anyway, let me move on. So that's the story of Joseph. So I want to say a few things about when your dreams come true or making your dreams come true. Now listen, this is important. So number one, I want you to know this. Don't be defeated by disappointments. Don't be defeated by disappointments. Listen, the old army uh, slogan years and years ago, before they come out with that stupid slogan that they come up with, an army of one, because there's no such thing as an army of one, uh, but the slogan for the army for years and years used to be, be all that you can be. Listen, get yourself some dreams. Get yourself some God-given dreams. Uh, and set your sights on it. And don't take no for anything less than those dreams God give you. But number one, don't be defeated by disappointments. See, the Bible teaches here that Joseph, uh, that his brothers, they hated him because of his dreams. And then they sold him into, cast him into a pit and sold him into slavery. And what Joseph was beginning to find out, and it was a long series of disappointments in his life, was that life brings disappointments. And I know it seems in recent weeks we've talked about this, uh, but young people, listen, you're going to discover this. Some of us that are older, uh, some of us that have lived longer, uh, we've experienced it and we understand it and we know it, but life doesn't always turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out. Life doesn't always happen like you think that it should happen. It doesn't happen when you think things uh, should happen. And so there are disappointments in life. There's heartbreaks in life. And uh, you can write that down under number one. There's going to be difficult days uh, in my life if God lets me live long enough. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be hard times. Uh, but the thing is about Joseph is he didn't let disappointments defeat him. Uh, he let disappointments uh, strengthen him and make him more uh, of what he really needs to be. And what I found out th is this, is that during difficult times, during, dis during disappointments in life, during, uh, during days that you don't understand, I've, what I've really found is this. Though, though they are disappointments, 
uh, rather than letting defeat letting them defeat me, what I do is is I just look and I know because of experience that God's really working on me. And so maybe somebody's watching online this morning. Maybe somebody's here today, and you're thinking, you know what? Uh, I've been defeated by a disappointment in my life. I've been defeated by something that's happened to me, something I'm going through. Uh, listen, you can just rest assured and have a calm in your heart because what you need to know is is that God's doing a work in your life. He would have never allowed it to happen to you or He would have never caused it to come into your life uh, had He not have a plan and He's really working on you. See, what God was doing in the life of Joseph is God had given him some dreams and those dreams were going to come true. But God had to first work on Joseph. Uh, and so He allowed these disappointments to come into to his life. And so number one, don't allow yourself to be defeated by disappointments. You may get knocked down, uh, but listen, don't get knocked out. Just get up, pick yourself up again by God's grace and keep pressing forward toward those God-given dreams that God has given you. So number two, as we think about the life of Joseph, don't be limited by location. Now let me say something about that. So Joseph, he finds himself in a pit. Uh, he finds himself uh, in prison. Uh, he finds himself uh, in he finds himself in in Egypt of all places. And the thing you need to know about making your dreams come true is don't be limited by location because Joseph didn't allow himself to be. Maybe it's a physical location, literally, like Egypt with Joseph, uh, or maybe it's just a place where you're at in life. Don't let your circumstances limit having those dreams come true in your life. I started thinking about great people in the Bible and their circumstances. Uh, and I started thinking about various locations where you see people uh, where you see people who you know God had given a dream and they knew God had given them a dream. And, and God used them mightily and I thought, Lord, where, where are some of those locations at that some of these dreamers uh, found themselves. And I think about Paul. I, I think about he and, uh, he and Silas there in Acts 16 in the inner dungeon, uh, that inner prison, uh, and uh, they didn't let themselves be limited by location. Uh, what did they do? In an inner dungeon, after having been beat, whipped, and chained to the floor, they still sang praises unto God and they prayed. And the Bible says the prisoners heard them. Uh, and so whatever your location is today, I want you to know don't be limited by your location as you seek uh, to make those God-given dreams come true. Uh, then I think about Peter. I think about how he was put in prison and, and how that he had uh, 16 Roman soldiers gathered around him and soldiers outside the jail cell and soldiers outside the gate of the prison. Uh, and yet he did not allow himself uh, to be limited by location. I think about Paul, how he was on a ship in the Eurachlodon. A Eurachlodon, that was that great typhoon in the, in, the, uh, in the eastern Mediterranean. And he was on a ship, and the ship was about to be lost. And in fact, the Lord had come to him in a dream and said, you're, you're about to lose everything, but there won't be a loss of life. The whole ship will be gone. The whole cargo will be gone. Uh, and so Paul was able to minister during that time as God made the dreams that God had put in his heart uh, come true. Uh, so don't be limited by location. Wherever you're at in life, you, listen to me. You're as a, as a young person, you're always going to be wanting. You always want to be. You're always going to be wanting to be in the next place. You're always going to be looking down the road somewhere to the next event, the next accomplishment, the next uh, step in life. Uh, but wherever you are at currently, whether it be a physical location or just at this place in life that you just are lost or you really don't know what tomorrow holds or where the next step is, listen, don't let that limit you because God's given you some dreams. So don't be defeated by disappointment and, and don't be limited by location because if God's given you dreams, then it doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter physically where you stand on your feet at or where you lay your head down at night, but you've got to know that if it's God-given dreams, God intends on seeing this thing through because He has said, hey, the work I started in you, I will finish it and I will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's a promise uh, from our Lord and from our Savior. So, number one, don't be defeated by disappointments. Number two, don't be limited uh, by location. Listen, worship God uh, wherever that you are at. Number three, don't be tempted by temptation. 
Don't be tempted by temptation. Now, I'm going to say something right here, and I'm going to go a different direction with this, and it's the way it's the way I know that I'm supposed to go this morning. So one of the things that happened to Joseph, what wound him up in prison was, is that he was, sec- he, he was in charge of everything, and uh, Potiphar's wife uh, come to Joseph and appealed to Joseph to to have sex with her. And the Bible says that, that Joseph run at that thing. Now listen, I could stand here and I could preach about the evils of alcohol because that's a very real temptation today for young people. Uh, I could preach about the evils of, of narcotics and drugs and, and uh, illegal prescriptions and all of that because that's a very present and real thing in our world today. And uh, many of our young people have already started dabbling in that kind of thing. Very real, very, uh, very present evils, and we could uh, we could preach about uh, premarital sex, and we could present that because that's a very real temptation for for all of our young people, and, and I get all of that. But when I say don't be tempted by temptation, I really think that there's some larger temptations out there, and that really, in a certain sense, uh, they are more significant uh, in the lives of our young people. What are those temptations then? If we're not talking about alcohol or drugs or sex, what are the temptations that are significant in the lives of our young folks? I think number one is is that temptation to settle for less than God's best for our lives. It's to settle for, settle for second best. Settle for even good in our life and not God's best. That's a sermon I've preached, and I'll always keep preaching that. And for, for those who have never heard it, I want you to listen to me. I think the temptation in life is this oftentimes. It is just for us to settle. We find something good, and we just decide to take it because it's something good that's been uh, dangled in front of our eyes. And so we settle by, by, by taking that something good. Well, God's not interested in giving you what's good. God's interested on giving you His best. And He's, he's interested in making those God-given dreams come true. God's got a dream for all of us. We all ought to be dreamers. Uh, liberty ought to be a dreamer. Uh, but listen, we can't settle for, for next to best. Or we can't settle for less than best. And so sometimes I think we do that, and and that is a temptation in our lives. And I think it is a dangerous temptation, especially as a young person. But now let me tell you this, as a young individual, if you are seeking God's best for you, if you are seeking what... uh, what God has has put in your heart and the dreams that God has given you, uh, then you need to know this, that to have God's best, most often times it involves it involves a time of waiting. There'll be a time of there'll be a time when your patience will be tested and your patience will have to grow. Uh, and God must know that that you're willing to wait for whatever He's choosing to give you in life, what He's choosing to bless you with. And the very reason some of us, we just wind up with what's good is because we weren't willing to wait for God to bring His best into our lives. And so then we get stuck into that life of just uh, what's good and that life of really mediocrity instead of having the best things that God has in store for us. Are you with me? Say amen. All right. So... Don't be tempted by that temptation. Don't be tempted by that temptation to settle in life because I believe settling is a very real temptation. And the sad thing about settling for what's good is is you'll live a long you you could possibly live a long life living with what's good. And you'll be happy and satisfied with that and you'll never know what you missed that was the best. I'll tell you another temptation I think that's very real for our young people today, and that is the temptation to just to kind of follow the crowd. And I'm not talking so much about peer pressure directly, but I'm talking about the temptation to not so much be an individual as God created you to be, but the temptation to look at your neighbors, your friends, and, and want all that they have and do all that they do because you feel the pressures of having to keep up. You feel the pressures of having to, to be like them. Well, listen to me. Discover who you are as a young person, as an individual. Discover who you are in Christ. 
Uh, discover those God-given dreams that He's given you. And don't be tempted by temptation to have to, to fall in and want what everybody else is wanting and do what everybody else is doing and, and become what everybody else is becoming. But take those dreams God gives you and you follow Him. And don't be defeated by disappointment and, and don't be limited by location. But most of all, don't be tempted by these temptations. Now, I know the two I've mentioned to you, settling for less than what, what is best and attempting to attempting just to follow society or follow the crowd. I know they seem like lesser temptations to you than the evils of drugs or alcohol, but let me remind you that far more people die from mosquito bites than do from bear attacks throughout the world every day. So sometimes it's not the big things that are it's not the big things that will kill you. It's not the big things that are killers. Sometimes it's the smaller things. Now watch this. So as we look at the life of Joseph and we start thinking about uh, the path he walked, uh, I want you to understand this. He had, uh, he had been betrayed by brothers. Uh, he had been betrayed by uh, the butler and the baker. So number four, don't be broken by bitterness. Don't be broken by bitterness. I, I, again, this has just been two weeks ago or three weeks ago now that uh, you know we spoke on the, the waters of Mara, the bitter waters of Mara. We spoke, we, we preached a whole sermon on bitterness. But listen to me, don't be broken by bitterness. People did Joseph wrong. If anybody had a reason to be bitter, it was Joseph. Uh, folks, they had done him wrong, and he had every right to be angry. He had every right to be mad, and he, ever, he had every right to be bitter. But write this down. Bitterness will break you. It will break you. If you God has given you a dream, and somebody has wronged you, or something has happened in life that you don't feel is fair, you have the opportunity to become bitter over that. You have the opportunity to, to let that settle inside of you. Uh, but if God's given you a dream, don't be broken by bitterness. Listen, you take, the, you take that bitterness that you have every right to be, uh, to have that emotion. You take that bitterness uh, and you be sure that every day that, that you release it from yourself and you give it to the Lord and you get it off of you uh, because bitterness, will, uh, bitterness will, will ruin you and it will become a poison in your life. And not only is it a poison in your life, but it'll affect you, it'll affect everyone around you, and it will affect God's destiny and God's plan for you. And I'm going to give you a big tip right here, and it wouldn't hurt some church members to write this down. If you're watching online, it, it would help you to write this down as well. If you know somebody that is bitter uh, in your life, somebody around you, somebody you work with, somebody you talk to, somebody you live with, whatever the case may be. If you know someone that's bitter, listen to me. You love them. You pray for them. You lift them up to the Lord in prayer. But stay away from bitter people. Because bitter people will make you bitter. They're very easy to identify. Sometimes I hear people sharing with me about having talked to a bitter person and in my mind I'm just thinking, why are you even listening to a bitter person? Why are you even talking to a bitter? Get away from them. Stay away from them because bitter people, they'll make you bitter. And when you're bitter, then your dreams that God's given just can't come true. How to make your dreams come true? And lastly, don't be prideful in prosperity. Don't be prideful in prosperity. I'm going to read one verse here, or two verses, as the story of Joseph begins to close in Genesis 41. Genesis 41, verse 51. In 52, the Bible says this. And Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, which means, for God said he hath made me forget all of my toil and all of my father's house. In the name of a second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in my land of affliction. Don't be prideful in prosperity. Joseph could have been mad. He could have been angry. And then when he was prospered, he could have, uh, he could have, he could, he could have exalted himself and he could have said, look what I have done. 
Look what I have risen above. I've grabbed myself by the bootstraps and pulled them up. Uh, and, uh, and I have accomplished much in life given what I've been going through and what I've went through and how I have been betrayed. But he didn't do that. What he said was, is God has delivered me. And God has called me, caused me to be fruitful even during a lifetime of hurt, a lifetime of betrayal, uh, what could have been a lifetime of bitterness uh, and temptation. God's delivered me from all of that. And he is the source of all of my blessings. So don't become prideful in prosperity. If God's God's given you a dream, then you need to know God has a plan to prosper you. And He has a plan to prosper you greatly. But don't become prideful in prosperity. Always give glory to God. Always put God first. Always acknowledge Him. Girls, you can come to the piano. Abs, you come, whatever whatever you have prayed about and whatever you have planned, and I close with this. How to make your dreams come true. Young people, listen, I want to see your dreams come true. I wish God would let me live long enough to see all these graduates become adults in life and to be able to come to me and say, you know what, I had some dreams, but they weren't God-given dreams, but God gave me some dreams And I did these things you've talked about that Sunday morning. And my dreams have come true. And so, I thought about this story I read the other day. It's the story of Spanish explorer Hernan Cortez in April of 1519. He sailed, and he sailed into Veracruz, Mexico. He only had 600 men. And yet in two years, even though he was vastly outnumbered, he defeated Montezuma and all the warriors of the Aztec Empire. He conquered all of Mexico. And facing uh, incredible odds, and dangerous and difficulties and perils and, and temptations to turn back and quit. Makes you wonder how he did it. How did he conquer with only 700 men all of all of Mexico and Montezuma's army. Well, when they got off the ships as they landed there in Veracruz, he uh, he ordered that all 11 ships be burnt. And so as they stood on the shore facing an unknown future, they watched those ships, their only way of turning back, burn and sink to the bottom of the bay. And so from that point on, there was only one thing to do. That was press forward, to move forward, because there was no turning back. So young people, I don't know where you're at today in life, in living, but I want to encourage you this. Get yourself some God-given dreams. Write them down as God speaks them to you. And don't turn back and don't look back. But always press forward. No matter the difficulties, no matter the odds, no matter if the world says you can't do that, if the world says it's impossible, if the world says no, if God's give you some dreams, then you plant your feet and you stand and you look to Him and honor Him until those dreams come true. No turning back. So I pray today there'll be somebody here, young or old alike, who says, you know what? I'm not looking back. I'm not thinking on my yesterdays. But what I'm looking for is my tomorrows where God's made me some promises. Some promises maybe nobody else understands. Some promises maybe I can't tell a soul. But deep inside of me, I know. I'm holding out for what God says is best. And with these things I have today, preacher... By God's grace, my dreams will come true. So if you need to pray this morning, you need to worship Him, whatever you need to do, you can do it sitting down, you can do it on your knees, or you can just stand and lift your hands in the air as Elizabeth sings.